Hi, I'm Abby Hicks with TweedledeeDesigns.com and in this video we're going to learn how to take an embroidery pattern and prep it for stitching. The first thing in beginning an embroidery stitch is obviously to find the pattern that you want and you can find patterns all over the place. You can find them in different craft stores, you can find them online in my shop, in other shops. You can design your own just using different clip arts or different freehand designs that you really like. Anyway, once you find your pattern, you will know what you're going to do because it determines your fabric, your floss, size of your hoop. So find a pattern you really, really like and let's get started. In this video, we're going to use my basic embroidery pattern. It's called the beginning embroidery pattern. You can find it on a download on my website. But it is one of my favorites for teaching because each of the stems is one of the stem or basic stitches that we have already done. And then it also has the flowers with the lazy daisies, satin stitch, French knots. It includes everything that's a basic in embroidery. So I'm going to show how to transfer this pattern onto your fabric. For my fabric, because I want my embroidery to really stand out, I'm going to use a plain fabric. But often I like to stitch on printed fabrics. I can find a printed uh, basic floral pattern or one of my favorites is old vintage quilts that aren't finished. So I get the quilt tops that aren't finished and I can do my little crazy stitching up the different seams and embellish them. So <clears throat> depending on what your pattern is will determine the kind of fabric that you use. And because I want this one to stand out, I'm gonna use my favorite plain vintage linen. Now to transfer a pattern, I use a light box, which is just simple and easy. I think it cost me $18 at a craft store years ago. I think you can even find them cheaper now. But if you don't have a light box, you can just take your pattern and tape it to your window. Just use some painter's tape, tape it to a window and hold your fabric directly over that pattern and then you can trace. But I'm going to use my light box for this demonstration. So you lay your pattern down, you lay your fabric, position it how you're going to want it. If you're going to frame the stitch, you know, and you have your size, you're going to want to get that fabric nice and even. So I'm going to put it in the middle of the stitch. Now my favorite tools for tracing, I used to use pencil years ago, hated it because if I ever went off my line, then you'd see the pencil and I couldn't get it out. Then I went to water soluble pens, which, you know, they work okay, but when you're rinsing out your fabric, sometimes your flosses, some of the different heavy color flosses will bleed out and then it would bleed onto the white fabric, which I learned from sad experience often happens. So my favorite tool now is this friction pen made by Pilot. It's heat sensitive. So you can draw right onto your fabric and erase it with steam heat. It comes off instantly. So Friction didn't design it for quilters and embroiderers. They designed it as an erasable pencil pen and then they found out it was heat sensitive when people's writing started disappearing off of pages. So, but for people who sew, it's great. I even use it in my quilting because I can stitch a straight line and I can just follow right along on my machine and it keeps me straight. So once my fabric is on my pattern, then I take my friction pen and I just draw right onto the fabric. And you'll see I'm going to draw one of my crazy flowers right onto this fabric. And you see it just transfers on really easily. Okay, once you've transferred your pattern, I always back my stitches with an 80 cotton, 80 20 cotton. You can find it at craft stores prepackaged um, in little packages. It's fairly inexpensive, but the reason why I like that behind my embroidery is it pads my stitches and it hides my lines as I'm going from one flower to the next flower and I'm just carrying my string across you don't see the string come through the front. So I just back my stitch, I just lay it in there with the 80-20 cotton. 
Then you should get your hoop. And I like to try to choose a hoop that's large enough to keep the whole design in one hoop so that I'm not moving it around and crunching over my embroidery floss. If it's a really large pattern, then obviously you're going to have to move your hoop around. But And the larger the hoop, the less tension you get on your stitch. So it's kind of a trade-off, but um, I try to keep the, the whole pattern within the size of the hoop. So this is a six inch hoop, which fits perfectly for this pattern. So I'm gonna take both the cotton and the top linen, put it in my hoop, and snap it on. And I want it to be nice and tight. And I'll cinch it down a little. And I kind of stretch just to make sure that it's nice and tight so that as I'm pulling and tugging that I can keep that fabric tight and it helps keep your lines and all your little loops and knots nice and straight. So there you go. We have that prepped. Now for embroidery floss, we've kind of covered that in some of the other videos. I use whatever I like. So I don't stick to one kind of floss. I do use DMC a lot and most of my patterns are DMC. I've used Cosmo and I love Cosmo because it doesn't tangle and the colors are really vibrant. Um, lately I've been really obsessed with Sue Spargo's Eleganza because of the braiding in it and the texture it gives to my patterns but I've been known to use vintage wool and whatever I can find that I really, really love the texture and color of. So depending on what floss you're using will be your needle, but embroidery needles are almost a little too small for me. I don't use them unless I'm using doing really tiny stitches and like two strands of floss. But for generally, I usually use a thicker needle with a larger hole. So there's your needles, your floss, your marking pen, your fabrics, the light box, the pattern. I think we kind of covered the basics of how to prep your pattern for stitching. I hope you enjoy these videos and that I inspired you to try more embroidery. You can find me at TweedledeeDesigns.com.